This is the lecture on plant diversity. <clears throat> on, on this slide, I just want to make sure that you know um, the traits that land plants share. Um, and the main one on this, on this page is the alternation of generations. So make sure that you know that all land plants under um, their life cycle involves an alternation of generations. There we go. And um, <clears throat> there is a sporophyte generation that produces spores. And then there is a gametophyte generation that produces the gametes, which are haploid. Um, the tissue that is growing, that is in the process of growing, is called apical meristem tissue. You find that at the tips of roots and shoots. This is an um, illustration of um, like an overview of the alternation of generations. All plants, whether they are um, mosses, which are very simple and non-vascular, or whether they are flowering plants, um, no matter what type of plant, all plants undergo an alter alternation of generations life cycle. So all plants have a gametophyte structure which is multicellular, and the gametophyte structure is haploid. Everything in yellow is haploid. The gametophyte structure um, will produce the gametes, which are sperm and egg. The sperm and egg will fuse. Another word for this is fertilization. And when they fuse, the fertilized egg is called a zygote. Since the sperm and the egg, or the gametes, are haploid, the zygote is diploid, meaning that the zygote contains two copies of the um, chromosomes, one from the sperm and one from the egg. So the zygote will also grow. Um, the zygote will divide and, and become a multicellular sporophyte, which all the cells in the sporophyte are going to be diploid, just like the zygote. Then, when the sporophyte cells undergo meiosis, they're going to become haploid spores. The spores will grow into, the spores will undergo mitosis and, and become a haploid gametophyte structure. They will, they will germinate and grow into a haploid gametophyte structure. This will make a lot more sense when we use specific examples. Um, this is a picture of the apical Mary stem tissue that's found in um, like a, a typical root. This tissue is under is in the process of undergoing mitosis. So it is in the process of growing. It allows the plant to elongate and grow taller. And um, it is called apical Mary stem tissue. At the tips of roots and shoots, shoots are going to be your stems and your branches. Um, anything above the ground. Now, the classification of the land plants, which is what we're going to be concerned with, the land plants are the embryophytes. We're going to look at plants that are non-vascular and plants that are vascular. Non-vascular means they don't have a system of veins or vessels that transport water, minerals, and food throughout the plant. So this is going to be our seedless plants. The mosses are in the phylum bryophyte. The liverworts are actually a part of a different phylum called the hepatophytes, um, even though that's not listed here. But the liverworts, hornworts, and mosses are all seedless, non-vascular plants. And then the vascular plants are divided into seedless vascular, and that's going to include the lycophytes or the club mosses. We've got an exa example in lab called the pine moss. That is a club moss. And then the teratophytes or pterophytes, depending on where you see it, and those are going to include the ferns. The horsetails actually are from a different phylum called the sphenophytes. 
Um, we, we learned that in lab, but they're very closely related to the ferns. So this vascular seedless plants are going to be the lycophytes and the pterophytes, and they're going to include club mosses, horsetails, and ferns. And then we have the seed plants or spermatophytes. The gymnosperm, gymnosperm means naked seed, so this is going to include the conifers, the pine trees, uh, cone-bearing plants, and the angiosperms um, are the covered seeds or protected seeds, and they're going to include the um, flowering plants. Okay, so this is the, the these are the groups of plants and the, the way they are classified. Um, we're not going to be concerned about learning every single um, type of plant, but I do want you to know that the um, mosses are bryophytes. Actually, the liverworts and hornworts have their own phylum, um, the way that we learn it in lab. The lycophytes are going to be the club mosses. And then the teratophytes are going to be the ferns. And the horsetails are sphenopsids, um, sphenophytes. The gymnosperms and the angiosperms are actually in a group called the spermatophytes. All right, so vascular plants, um, a plant growing vascular or um, evolving to having vascular tissue means that it can grow taller. So the vascular tissue is divided into xylem, which conducts water and minerals up to the shoot, from the root to the shoot. And phloem tissue transports the food produced in the plants by photosynthesis throughout the entire plant. So the phloem is going to start in the leaves and then it's going to spread throughout the branches and the stems and the um, even down to the roots. Plants are protected by a, um, many parts of the plant are protected by a waxy coating called a cuticle. Um, and plants can protect themselves from predators by um, producing um, toxins. Um, and plants can also protect themselves from ultraviolet radiation. Even though plants absorb UV um, radiation, and need it, they can also be damaged by it. So the um, flavonoids and other compounds can protect the plant from photodynamic damage, or in other words, from ultraviolet radiation. Uh, plants co-evolved with animals. Um, you can just take, for example, the um, plant the flowering plants. So the flower evolved certain colors and certain scents, uh, certain smells to attract pollinators like bees. And bees evolved different strategies or different um, adaptations to help them to find the flowers and to uh, get to the nectar. Um, so this is called co-evolution. We also have plants that evolved um, poisons that, that they produce to discourage predators. So um, we found that this happened um, over the years. The animals and the plants evolved side by side. Um, green algae share more tra traits with land plants than other algae, as you might guess. This is a um, green algae called chorales or charophytes. And it's not in the kingdom plantae plant because it does not produce um, or it does not exhibit alternation of generations. So it must exhibit alternation of generations to be considered a plant. Okay, now we'll talk about the seedless non-vascular plants. Um, 
their gametophyte generation is the dominant stage. You always have to know which is the dominant stage of the life cycle. The gametophyte is the dominant stage. Um, they are very short. They are collectively known as bryophytes, even though um, the phylum name for liverworts and hornworts is different. It's not bryophyta. Sorry, I'm trying to underline bryophytes. But anyway, uh, I'll find it later. The bryophytes include the mosses, the liverworts, and the hornworts. Here's a picture of the liverworts. They're the mo most primitive plants and are closely related to the first land plants. Notice how short they are and how close to the ground that they grow. The life cycle of the liverwort is shown here. Um, I'm just going to point out the gametophyte and the sporophyte for the liverwort. So the, the liverwort gametophyte is a leaf called a thallus. There is a female and a male gametophyte. Just saw it. Okay, here we go. All right. The, the female and the male gametophyte is this um, leafy structure called a thallus. Um, the sporophyte. is going to be a slender stalk similar to what you find in the um, in the moss plant. So the sporophyte is going to be a stalk that grows out of the female gametophyte. All right, hornworts look like this. Um, And the life cycle just shows you the gametophyte, which is a leafy structure, and then the sporophyte is a um, the sporophyte is going to be slender. This is the sporophyte here. It's a stalk, very similar to the sporophyte in a moss. Now, this is um, the sporophytes in a moss plant with the capsules on the end. Um, and here's the life cycle of a moss, and I do want to go over this in detail with you. Um, let's start with the, um, the gametophytes. Okay, so mosses, the, the green mossy part of the moss that, like, you, you know, when it's growing on the ground or on a rock or something, you, you can uh, rub your fingers over it and it feels like carpet, and it's kind of really short like carpet. Um, that green leafy part of the moss that you see, that you identify or recognize as moss, those are the gametophytes. So mature gametophytes are just the green mossy plant that you identify as a moss. There is a male gametophyte as well as female gametophyte. The um, male gametophyte contains um, antheridium, which produce the sperm, and the sperm have flagella and they can swim. And then the female gametophyte contains the archegonium, which um, produces the egg. So the sperm then swim to the egg. And when they do, the sporophyte grows up out of the female gametophyte. This is the sporophyte here. The sporophyte is a stalk with a capsule on the end. The capsule is called a calyptra. And the stalk is called the seta. So the sporophyte is the capsule and the, and, and the stalk that grows up out of the gametophyte plant. It's all this part that's in this green box here. Um, in the calyptra is where the spores are produced. So the spores are haploid. And what will happen is the, the calyptra will open up and burst and the spores will land on the ground and grow into the gametophytes and the cycle will start over.